Hey everybody, today I've got some fun and creative cottagecore inspired painting ideas for you. I'm going to use a variety of different brushes and the Karen Dash palette with gouache and also this Hanemühle tone sketchbook. This has a very light gray tint and you can already see me sketching the first idea, which is this fireplace with a cat sleeping on it and I also painted a few plants around that scene just to fill it up a little bit more and make it look a little bit more cozy. In reality I would not put these plants right next to the fireplace but this is a painting so we can do whatever we want and there's also a cup of something on it. It's probably tea I would say which is the most cozy drink i would say so this scene is something out of a winter cottage super cozy and just something where you can feel warm when you look at it and i had a lot of fun with this one it's one of my favorites from this video actually and i like that it's somewhat simple but it still has quite a few things going for it so you can see that i was using a variety of different green tones for the plants and then i also colored in the cat which has this orange tone and i kind of repeated my colors over the piece so you can see that the plant pots they have similar tones like the one on the left it has a similar color than the cat and then we can still see those colors repeated in the fireplace itself a little bit with the fire so i wasn't using the exact same tone for different things but i was using very of the same color just mixing in a few other tones so we kind of have this color palette of just these earthy orange brownish tones and a little bit of yellow for the fire and then we have the green tones for the plants and then we have this blue black gray tone for the fireplace itself and those are basically all of the colors in the piece and that makes it look cohesive and i really like the way that that looks and also because we are using or i'm using a gray sketchbook here i wanted to kind of create an effect with the background and so you can see the steam coming out of the pot and that I used white for and I just dry brushed it on so I used the white straight out of the tube with no water so we have this dry brush effect and I really like how this works with the gray background and I'm really starting to love this sketchbook so much it has such a good format and the color is just right you know it's not too dark but it is this light tint so this is what the first piece looks like and then on the left I wanted to go in this kind of illustration route as well and I want to practice drawing more characters and I'm not extremely happy with the one that I did here but I really want to practice this more and it's kind of a little bit outside of my comfort zone to do stylized characters like that but I I think that my illustrations could really benefit from having characters in it because usually I just paint landscapes without any characters so they can sometimes look a little bit empty and maybe would look better or more dynamic if there was something going on in the landscapes so I kind of want to practice that a little bit more but I really need practice because I feel like this character turned out pretty stiff um, but 
it's okay. I also have a few issues with, with the values of this painting because you can see the pink of the dress and the green behind it. It just all has the same value. It's a different color, but the contrast is really lacking in this piece. And it's okay. I'm learning. If I were to do this piece again, I would definitely do it with different colors. But I was kind of going for this pastel theme here. I wanted this a dreamy little world that's kind of cutesy it's cottage core but it is also kind of a candy world almost with these colors so that's kind of what I was going for but I feel like a little bit of contrast could have really helped a little bit more of it but you know you practice and you learn so I might use this concept at one point again I really like this tiny little cottage it's not really a um, building that's really developed I mean this bunny could not enter this house because it's so tiny but that's kind of what it makes it look cute for me even though it doesn't make any sense it, I mean it doesn't have to it's an illustration and I really like all of the strawberries around it and you know I like the concept of it and the way that I stylized the house and the greenery around it honestly my main issue is just the character itself because I'm just not that used to doing that so I just have to go through this phase where I practice that and hopefully get better at it but I'm sure a lot of people will tell me that they love this. Every time I say that I don't love an art piece that I've created, then people step to the art piece's defense and are like, this is so good, how dare you say it's not? Like, yeah, but it's very subjective and it's my art and I'm not gonna love every single piece that I create and that's okay. You don't have to love every single piece that you create, especially in a sketchbook because we're playing around here, we're trying new concepts, we're seeing if it works and if it doesn't that's oh that's good as well because you learned something and I did have fun with this piece even though I'm not a hundred percent satisfied with it and then in the end you can see I'm adding in I'm coloring in the bottom I was gonna leave this just as white space and I kind of liked the cut out look of that but because I felt like the piece was lacking in contrast so much I wanted to throw this dark color on it and I feel like it helped somewhat it made it look a little bit better and here's the finished page spread now I am sketching another one and this time I'm going to use watercolors and I'm going to paint a fruit basket because I was thinking about what kind of things are cottage core and honestly what comes to mind is vegetable gardens and stuff like that but I have painted so many vegetables to be fair, I have also painted a lot of fruits in the past, but fruits are also cottage core. Like you go into the garden and you pick up your homegrown apples and then you put them into this little basket and you might go for a picnic on the countryside. All of these things kind of work together in my mind and so here we have a lovely fruit basket and I painted some apples and also some tangerines. I just had to look up that word. It sounds incredibly wrong because they're called mandarine in German and tangerine. It just it doesn't sound like a fruit to me. It sounds like a trampoline or something like that but oh well we are painting tangerines and apples in this fruit basket I also put a cute little bow on it just to make it more cute I guess and just to add some more visual interest to it and I'm pretty happy with this piece I spent a lot 
of time on it and I really wanted to make every single detail look right and in the end I really had to stop myself from going too far because in the end I realized that I started to overwork it a little bit but I mean I stopped at a good point I believe but sometimes you can still see small little issues with your art and you still want to improve them but at one point you just have to say enough is enough and you just have to say it's done now and this is how I'm gonna leave it and other people might not even notice those tiny little issues with it and you know when you work on an art piece you have looked at it probably for several hours I mean depending on how long it takes you to create but you've looked at it for quite a while and you always look at it with this lens of what can I still improve and at one point you have to say okay I'm gonna stop here I'm not going to continue to improve the painting because it's done and then you have to accept the little mistakes that you might still see but other people don't look at your art with this lens where they feel like what could be improved unless they're maybe an art teacher but most people are going to look at your art and have a fresh and open mind and see all of the things that they like about it so it really doesn't matter if there's small tiny details that you're not that happy with and I'm honestly I'm saying this to myself so that I know this and that I uh, remember that and yeah but overall I'm really happy with this I'm happy with how the fruits turned out and also with the basket itself because I don't think that I have painted a basket like that ever before and I didn't know how to sell the point that it is this woven basket and I just didn't know how to paint that so I was figuring it out as I went because also I couldn't find a reference picture that really looked the way that I wanted the basket to look so I was kind of making things up in my mind and I feel like it turned out pretty okay for that and I'm pretty happy with all of the colors and everything and this is what the finished piece looks like. And now the next one is going to be super simple. So if these were a little bit too hard for you, this one is very suitable for beginners. You just sketch out this very, very basic house and then you paint some plants in it. And those don't have to look perfect or good or anything because we are, these are kind of going into the background a little bit anyways we're going to turn this into a greenhouse and so this is just the layer of what's in the greenhouse and if I were to do this again I would paint the plants in lighter tones I think I went a little bit too dark with my colors here and in the end it lacked a little bit of contrast with the structure of the greenhouse you will see what I mean later but if you are following along to this then I would recommend painting all of your plants in very light green tones and don't go as dark as I did here and just fill up this house with different plants and in, in different shapes and different green tones. I did these bushes, I did some trees, I did all of these smaller and bigger leaves, you know, just some variation in there and just filling it up and kind of uh, also having the plants overlap a little bit because some are more in the foreground and some are more in the background obviously so you kind of have to paint around it if you're using watercolors if you're using gouache you could also layer your gouache obviously and you could start with the layer that's in the back and then move yourself and move into the foreground I might 
do this same idea with acrylic gouache at one point because I feel like it would work really well with acrylic gouache because you can layer it very well and then you don't have to paint around your subjects but it works just as fine with any other medium whatever you have now that I'm done with the plants you can see that I'm starting to paint the structure of the greenhouse and I was using my brush here with black paint on it and if I were to do it again I might consider using a pen for this. I wanted it to look painterly and it worked really well at first but then I kind of stopped started to mess up my lines a little bit because it's pretty hard to paint these lines with the pen and you can see that it, they got thicker and thicker and I personally feel like there's not enough contrast between the plants and the structure of the house but all in all it's a cute and fun painting idea and if you want to see some more fun and creative painting ideas then check out this video next <laughs>